Welcome back to 52 Lockup. I am your Apple Teeny Cabin Bit and Apple TV. 52 Lockup is a series I started to talk about one of my biggest passion. True crime. A new episode in every Cat Maniac Monday for 52 Mondays, 52 Crimes. Don't say a word about me being late. You have no idea what the hell's been going on. Cool. Thank you. Hope you guys enjoy. Be sure to <laughs> like, leave some feedback, and subscribe, of course. Yada, 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 yada. You know the rules. Uh, and of course, viewer discretion is always advised. Um, although, I guess not so much in this in this case, I guess. Um, so, it is always interesting uh, for me, for what I personally find to be um, interesting to grow up through the times in American history, right? Where you're watching events like just unfold right before your eyes and be left with the thought of like, wow, this one's for the books, you know, the textbooks, you know, as I mean, whether it was growing up in the Columbine era, I mean, don't get me wrong, school shootings have been happening for a little bit, but they've been increasing in the kind of weapons they've been using. That's my era, uh, beginning of the, you know, the school shootings, you know, and, and while I was in school and watching all this happen, I was sitting there trying to comprehend the world around us. That includes the other fellow students, right? So whether it was watching the news of the first bombing of World Trade Center on February 26, 1993, seeing my fellow pageant kids in the footage, the news footage, running for, you know, for their lives. And then the repeatedly, you know, playing of the planes flying into the building on 9-11, watching the reactions to Obama's presidency, to Bush, etc. Watching the modern day Upton Sinclair's The Jungle unfold before the world with continued exploitation of others for an accomplished agenda. It's, it's, it's fascinating. Right, it's a little fascinating, you know. Now we're up to the depressive twenty twenties, right? You know, so the depression, the depressive twenty twenties, you know, brought on you know an uncontrollable dent in the global history with the COVID nineteen pandemic. The inauguration of President Donald J Trump on January twentieth, twenty twenty seventeen, to January twentieth, twenty twenty one, is what would inspire others to to take matters into their own hands, right? Due to COVID-19 being an airborne respiratory virus, there was much speculation on how the next voting process would take place, right? In order for, you know, everything to remain safe. A bevy of options were provided and the election took place only uh, for President Trump to lose the election to President Joe Biden in 2021. Now, former President Trump would publicly state that the Democratic Party had rigged the election by forging, altering, or even discarding absentee ballots. Um, that's a mailed in vote for those who may not know. Um, on November 4th, Trump maintained the narrative that he was the rightful winner of the election. Now his accusations were indirectly endorsed uh, by several Republican rem uh, members of the uh, Congress uh, who expressed concern and uncertainty about the outcome, but also refused to acknowledge Biden as the winner as well. Some of the states pitched voter suppression laws that would be labeled as integrity election laws, like Florida placing restrictions on mail voting for the availability as well as the accessibility or you know the requirement of placing state ID or social security numbers uh, on the uh, mail ballot uh, application without providing options for those who may not be able uh, to pull all of that there. Uh, Georgia banning food and water to those online for voting which person I think is a little messed up because those lines do get long. <laughs> um, those Montana House bill uh, eliminating uh, election day registration, right? They completely eliminated the election day, uh, stating that young people are not on our side of the aisle, which is weird, right? Because you're like, well, you guys have the right to vote, but fuck you. Um, <laughs> there were even gun zealots at the election lines with MAGA hats intimidating voters, uh, voter rights to vote for who? They have the right to vote for. I mean, the truth is, if you want them to vote for a snail, a, a dragon, it's it's your right to do so, right? Um, Trump supporters uh, became heavily radicalized as time moved forward, and then to hear the concept of voter fraud would only lead to a deeper emotional, angry, um, I guess, tirade. On December 14th, Biden held a victory of 306 electoral votes compared to Trump's 232 electoral votes. Uh, for those who may not know, when people cast their vote, they're actually voting for a group of people called the electors, right? The college, right? The number of electors each state gets is equal to its total number of senators and representatives in Congress. It is a winner takes all kind of voting, right? And not every state has that, right? Um, but about 48 out of 50 states uh, award the electoral votes on a winner takes all basis. Um, that as does District of Columbia. 
Uh, so to be elected president, a candidate must receive at least a minimum of 270 of the 530 electoral votes cast uh, casted nationwide. If no candidate receives 270 votes, the final decision is made by the U.S. House of Representatives. It sounds easy, like, ah, super easy. We got it. Either you win or, you, or someone else picks it, right? But it gets deeper than that, right? So electors uh can't vote uh for a president uh, for a president and the vice president you know for presidential candidate for uh who both hail from uh the elector's home state so for instance if both candidates came from new york new york electors may vote for one of the candidates but not both uh in this hypothetical uh scenario however uh california um electors you know may vote for both new york candidates if that's if they so choose to um, so Trump supporters uh, felt the the election needed to be overturned and, and and it was fraud and even felt that Trump had won uh, by popular vote, which apparently was not true. The loss was not accepted. And FYI, uh, five uh, times um, in history uh, has a candidate won and the popular vote uh, lost the election. So that would be Andrew Jackson, 1824 to John Quincy Adams, uh, Samuel Tilden in 1876 to uh, Hayes, we have Grover, uh, Grover uh, Cleveland in 1888 to Benjamin Harris. Al Gore, yeah, we haven't heard that name in a presidential thing, right? To, in 2000 to George Bush, Hillary Clinton to Donald J. Trump in 2016. So now with all this going on, the tension is building for the Trump supporters. And this uh, would uh, is what would lead to a retired 20-year-old New York PD veteran to the United States uh, Capitol on January 6, 2021, uh, which is located in Washington, D.C. Now, Trump supporters were warned not to bring guns to the Capitol. Um, it seems that those who were radicalized and rioted at the U.S. Capitol seem to play out as a fantasized uh, modern day storming of the Bastille, right? You know, like in France. Um, but for a side note, for those who are curious, July 14th, 1789, a mob stormed the French prison Bastille, right? There were about seven prisoners inside. Um, they go storming in because they needed huge ammunition they, uh, that were held within the prison walls and they wanted the building to be surrendered. The prisoner governor was like, I ain't giving you shit. He just wasn't doing it. And whew, I'm gonna butcher the name. <laughs> governor Bernardo Rene uh, Jordan Marquis de la, la Noe. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I can't. My I don't have never taken French besides my name. Um, his head would actually be placed onto a spike and then paraded around town, right? Because these people are not fucking around. Uh, this was marked as the beginning of the French Revolution to overthrow the monarchy. Now, although scholars do debate of the exact causes, but the number one reason that seems to stem from the uh, from it is the bourgeoisie resenting. Um, exclusion from political power and positions of honor over a long period of time. Uh, the next one would be peasants aware, right? The, the, they woke now, right? Aware of their environment and did not want to support the feudal system. As well as uh, there's a blame on the Americans driving uh, France to the brink of bankruptcy due to the American Revolution from 1778 to 1782, crop failure from 1788, and of course the economic difficulties that were just piling up. Uh, it was a, it was decades of the people on the bottom becoming fed up, right? The very storm that Mr. Wayne was warned about and those in power were wondering how they could live so large uh, and leave so little for the rest, right? That's exactly what fueled um, uh, the revolution. However, January 6, 2021, uh, before former president completed his address after 1 p.m., a mob of loyalists forced their way through the fences at the western perimeter of the Capitol, leaving the officers to retreat to additional barricades closer to the building, right? So they're here and now they're like, fuck, we gotta move in, right? So the Metropolitan Police Department of the District of Columbia was actually sent in as reinforcements to assist the Capitol officers and the same loyalists who would say that they rallied behind officer lives left many of the officers brutally beaten with deadly weapons ranging from bats, pipes, flagpoles, uh, sprayed with chemical irritants and trampled. Um, within the hour, the last barrier on the west side of the building was completely breached and rioters were inside the building. After Trump's tweet about Mike Pence, Trump loyalists would also uh, threaten the for um, the former vice president's head. So I guess like that's that's where I'm getting the whole thing of the comparison where I believe they seem like they have the impression that this would be similar to the storming of the Bastille, which I do feel like sometimes tends to be fantasized uh, in regards to how Americans perceive it. Uh, it would it would take actually more 
take four more hours for the building to actually be completely cleared of the people. 140 Capitol and Metropolitan Police officers were assaulted and one died from a series of strokes that resulted from their injuries. Now, two committed uh, suicide. Um, one rider was actually shot by the police. One rider died of a heart attack and the third rider would be trampled to death. Uh, the damage to the Capitol building is estimated to be about $1.5 million. On January 13th, 2021, the House of Representatives, by a vote of 232 to 197, adopted a single article of impeachment against Trump for the incitement of the Capitol insurrection. Now, that is a lot. So that's what I mean by like watching like history happen before you, right? Um, the FBI are still looking to identify everyone or as many people as they can who stormed the Capitol. Uh, roughly looking at right now up to about 903 people so far who have been punished. Um, but the former U.S. Uh, Marine that I mentioned earlier, the former NYPD officer Thomas Webster is the one with the longest punishment so far of being sentenced to 10 years in prison. Uh, 56-year-old Thomas Webster once served uh, on the protective detail of Mayor Michael Bloomberg, uh, whom New Yorkers are not a fan of. Um, former officer Tom, uh, Thomas Webster would tackle Metropolitan PD officer Noah Rathbun, uh, grabbing his gas mask and beating him with the Marine Corps flagpole. Uh, Thomas would state immediately like he was defending himself, but the officer's body camera would tell a completely different story. In court, Thomas Webster would apologize to Noah and state, you know, he wished he never had come to Washington, D.C. when he was talking to Judge Mehta. Um, however, it does make me question what was their police career truly like? You know what I mean? Like, who were they as a person? Were there signs of potential, uh, you know, radicalization that people maybe perhaps didn't catch? Was this developed later on? I just, I'm just trying to piece everything together. Now, radicalization is described as a social and psychological process of incrementally experienced commitment to extremist political or religious ideology. The psychosocial uh, model of radicalized recruitment and violent mobilization recent theory suggests that the process of radicalization follows several phases, right? Because you, you have to really break it down because no one just becomes radicalized like, ah, like that. It's not, it's not like that. Mentally, it's, there are steps, right? So recruiters identify uh, basically their targets, right? Their audience. They, they want to know where they're vulnerable in context, such as their marginal neighborhoods, education centers, or places of worship. Recruiters then befriend their target to build up that trust. As soon as a recruiter is accepted by the person, then embark on the following three phases. Now, the first phase is psychological submission, right? Or emotional radicalization, whereby the person loses their autonomy and becomes dependent on their friendship with the recruiter and the other cell members, right? Um, this is achieved by using per, uh, persuasive and aggressive communication strategies, such as social isolation and inducing confusion between reality and fantasy, okay? Now, the second phase is political religious indoctrination or doctrinal radicalization, whereby the recruiter includes a new ideology, right? Using psychological manipulation techniques. Now, some of these techniques appear to be uh, like those used by totalitarian cults and are aimed at eliminating the personal identity of the target by reinforcing a new social identity with the extremist group, right? Because they're not going to be loyal to the concept unless they feel like the concept is them and the concept and they are the concept and the concept is them, right? So finally, in the third phase of the violent disinhibition of uh, legitimization uh, or violent radicalization, the recruit validates the use of violence by associating with the mistreatment and the oppression allegedly suffered by the new group, identifies the enemy and shifts responsibility by making an attack essential to improving their situ situation. Uh, by the way, if you're just curious about this, check out the National Library of Medicine for more um, references down below. Now, this radicalization is what led at least 903 people being arrested. You know, whether we're looking at Brad uh, Kavanaugh, we're looking at Jonathan Carlton, Jonathan Copeland, Bobby Wayne Russell, uh, Caleb Dillard, we're looking at Daniel Le uh, Layden, and so much more. Um... For those, that, just so you know, there's a list actually on Insider's link in the uh, references uh, with the names of every single person who's actually been caught. Um, and although uh, there's a higher chance of men being radicalized, there are women who are on that list as well who have been radicalized. So uh, you'll see a section down there that goes, 
you want to see the list, it's this link, insider.com, blah, blah, blah. It's there. Um, and they, they keep updating it. Um, now we have to really sit down and think about this. I mean, Tom, uh, Thomas Webster threw 10 years of his life at 56 years old for their radicalized behavior. I mean, he'll be 66 years old when he gets out of prison. Almost 70. Come on. Um, I, I'm, I'm curious, does this affect his pension as an officer for New York? Like how... What are the full ramifications like of his actions? Like, what are the full consequences? I mean, well, there there are concepts that explain um, th like what can make a person become more vulnerable, right, to becoming radicalized. Um, a lot of times, it, it tends to lean between you know from youth to adult with the potential combination of who struggles with a personal sense of identity. Key thing, right? Questioning their place in society, traumatic events, difficulty in social interactions, and lacking empathy and difficulty in comprehending the link between rewards and consequences to their actions. Um, and that makes me wonder, like, again, was Thomas Webster someone who always struggled with identity, um, you know, with personal identity, or was this something that he lost? Maybe he, maybe he was, maybe he was, you know, whatever, he did an amazing job, right? Maybe that's what, that's why he did good at the Marine, blah, blah, blah. Maybe he did really great. But then after he was no longer in service, did he lose his self of identity there? Um, and is that why finding this was that a way to like, I'm taking cause, like this is what I'm, I'm going to do. And then when you look at this and then you look at the other people who have done like mass shootings, whether it's over at the Buffalo supermarket, whether it's uh, someone else, whether it's from someone else from 4chan or like the guy who killed his kids and took his kids all the way to Mexico because he felt that his wife was part lizard. I mean, there's so, so, so much. Um, the question is, at what point does someone lose their sense of self? Without your sense of self, you need you need purpose. We can't help it, right? Um, we're human. <laughs> we need to feel like we have a purpose. We need to have a goal. Um, and when I look at Thomas uh, Webster, a lot of people with trauma tend to go into uh, you know uh, into like becoming an officer or the military. Y'all know who I'm talking about because I got military in my family. I know how crazy y'all are. <laughs> um, but no, uh, seriously though, like a lot of uh, people with some sort of uh, trauma seem to always go into trauma work of some sort, like, you know, or psychologists want to go into understanding about themselves through the comprehension of others. Um, and I find it really interesting. So I'm wondering, did he always struggle with this true sense of self? And is that what always made them vulnerable? And if that is the case as a society, how do we assist other people so we can lessen the opportunities for people to become radicalized by providing a sense of self? Um, when people do not have like a sense of purpose or a sense of self, that's usually where they tend to get into trouble. Um, most of the time, I'm not saying it's with everyone because um, we all know a couple of jerkwads, right? So we, <laughs> um, but it does make, things interesting uh for me to wonder as a society where do we, we we fail right um i think a lot of the times people are so focused on strictly themselves that they're not realizing that as a community you can genuinely assist each other you ain't got to give your, your your right arm or your leg but you can uh provide some kind of assistance to the rest of society uh, without sacrificing yourself. And if you know that this is too much for you to take on, then you need to step back and then let someone else kind of come in. Um, it's like saying, you know, it takes a village to raise a child. Um, uh, and the other thing is, it's one of the, the reasons why I feel like psychology should be uh, actually integrated as part of the um, academics when it comes to like maybe starting in middle school, maybe it depends. Uh, I personally had an interest in it in middle school, so I don't see why anyone else wouldn't be able to comprehend it. Um, I see everyone else as an equal. So to me, I'm like, yeah, put it in middle school. Uh, maybe put it in, the, you know, the seventh or eighth grade. Introduce it, the introduction to psychology. Um, and then, you know, do it again in high school. And if they really want to pursue it, they can do that as well as in college. Um, and I feel like when you have people or kids or a generation of people who are able to recognize, um, I guess, societal malfunctions or psychological malfunctions, um, it's a lot easier to go, hey, psst, I think Bob is losing it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you can start to recognize these things a little bit sooner. And I still stand by this idea that I really do think that in the beginning, we should really be uh, implementing uh, psychological uh, classes, especially psychological first aid, introduction to psychology, um, and maybe psycho uh, uh, psychology one um, during the years of middle school and then as well as high school. Maybe do, I don't know, 
and for anyone with, with, with power here, here's my idea, um, put psychology, like the introduction to psychology in eighth grade, skip the ninth grade, do, um, do psychological first aid in the 10th grade. And then for the 12th grade, you maybe just do psychology one. Um, and if they care to elaborate and go any further than that, they can simply just do it in college and then maybe go you know and then college will be more in depth about this doctor and that doctor and their ideologies here whether it's you know a womb of your pe penis envy whatever you want to you want to do you can go from there but i do think recognizing these signs um as a generation would literally provide almost in a sense like a generation of uh of psych people or social uh <laughs> uh or you know a uh, social people to just recognize like i don't think tiffany's doing so well she seems like little out of whack and it can also benefit in places where let's say um uh postpartum right um you want to recognize this, the, the signs of something you know postpartum psychosis you want to recognize like hey i don't think bethany is doing so well since she's been pregnant and after the baby um we may want to keep an eye on her make sure she don't do nothing crazy because her mind's not there um and the thing about it is uh i really i really think uh, society would benefit from one of those uh you know ideologies being being taught in order to recognize when something is wrong um yeah yeah um and i just i just think it's sad that thomas webster now has thrown his entire life away for 10 years um now stating that he of course regrets it now but i, I feel like everyone kind of regrets it um when they get caught right um and his time in prison may not be what he thinks is going to be right because he's also an officer um yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I just can't. I can't see. I can't see it being worth the risk. Uh, but that's today's episode. I know today's a little different. You're like, oh, that's weird. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, it's it's been. Very, I've been watching this case as it's been like unfolding with this one, this one, this one, this one, kind of just looking and seeing. And then of course Thomas Webster, he was like, you know, New York PD, and I was like, that's my state. So um, I kind of just wanted to like discuss that a little bit. Um, I also. Did want to like I guess throw in a little bit of history like you know storming the Bastille, uh, uh, and the information I retrieved is not from uh, just from our textbooks. It's from the ones in the UK. You'll see them in the references. Uh, no, but really I think storming the Bastille has become like a weird fascination of like yes, and that's when the people took everything back. Um, not understanding that it's really the people on the very bottom who were pissed the fuck off. Um, it's almost like there's a pandemic happening and everyone's really mad. Anyways, um, as if, as this case continues to be going about the insurrection continues, please, 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 my viewers, stay safe, stay vigilant, and leave me some comments down in the um, in the commentary. Um, you know, just let me know what did you think of the the insurrection. Um, what did you think about uh, the processes that led up to that? What did you think about the response? Uh, the whole thing with Mike Pence. Uh, are you surprised that they've caught up to at least 903 people? Uh, what were one of the, the news articles that you read about someone getting caught? And um, like one of them, I, I never forgot when it first happened. Um, there was a girl, um, her and her family voted differently. And she realized that I think one of her parents went there to go cause mayhem. And she blew her mom's spot up. And she was like, oh, what did you say to me? Remember this? Yo, that's my mom. Um, and she identified her mom. So it's just like, that's interesting. And I remember that, that stood out to me like so much um what do you what do you think we're not here to discuss who you voted for who you think i voted for um just because you're looking at the color of my skin no one knows exactly what political party i am and they can never ever guess either um because there's always major assumptions um only the emotional intelligent have been able to have that conversation with me uh but the comments is more for us to just simply discuss and even discuss with each other respectfully uh of what you think do you actually really believe that uh the uh the election was rigged and you know did you feel like it was rigged enough for you to want to go down or what stopped you from not wanting to participate in the um the insurrection of not showing you know showing up that day um i don't expect people to self-incriminate themselves but say i was there like i just i'm assuming nobody would do that but do whatever you want um but yeah just what were your thoughts and of course as always stay safe stay vigilant